Hello, all Library Network is here. Uh, I'm really glad to see you here. And uh, I know that it's a quite hot topic about sustainable uh, lifestyle. And uh, also here in Mixcar, we are also discussing this topic. And Ava is going to help me also out uh, today with uh, some questions. Uh, because uh, I know that this topic is very uh, important to her personally as well. But we have a very special guest today. And that's uh, most important because uh, it's not usual that you can have uh, uh, over 40 years experience uh, scientist in your company to have a great interview with her because uh, Mal uh, is a, a university professor, PhD, published two books uh, about Pete uh, Box uh, and also uh, over 40 different articles, scientific articles. So I think maybe you can give a short uh, overview. Thank you, Leila. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, all Pete people. My name is Mal Loro and I am from uh, Estonia, from uh, Tallinn University and Technology. And I am beat scientist, and I have said that I have a very long experience, practical experience in beat investigating. And first, I said some words about Estonian peatlands. If you see the map of the Estonian peatlands, that 22% of the territory of Estonia is covered by beat deposits. And it is very important to say in Estonia, it is useful for the sustainable use of peatlands and peat deposits and wetlands at all, that 25% uh, of the Estonian peatlands are under protection. Uh, it is uh, for the balance, uh, water balance and uh, all this uh, birds and other natural kinds will be safe. And also by my researchers at first, uh, that uh, I was leader in the Estonian Surgical Survey Technical University to investigating the Estonian peat deposits that I have to say that uh, 5,060 5, peat deposits are very well learned, especially it includes two the, sub, the substrate horses and growing media. When I learning was I have special term the techniques of the so slight humidified peat what is used for the agriculture and nowadays more in the gardening. And uh, all this uh, manuscript port was sent in the Zoological Survey Estonia are uh, now uh, digitalized. And uh, we, uh, four years ago, it finished in this year, we compiled in the University of Technology Estonia B database. And it is uh, collected all these bit investigation results are uh, all the terms and thickness of the Swagnum bit and Tasso bit layers. It may be 500,000 determination and laboratory analysis are uh, more than 30,000 determination. And especially what is a very proud, these are the botanical determination of uh, different species of plant. What is for the future, it is too, for the gardening, very important. And this big database, you in this slide, it is in, translated to in, in English, that it is uh, internationally used. And this uh, includes all these maps and all these maps, so how we see the thickness of the peat layers and peat deposits are all digitalized and all these are in uh, public use. Thank you. I suppose you said please use this. Thank you. Now I would like to add uh, that uh, I know that uh, you've been in, uh, in the peat uh, pork uh, industry, like uh, in the science side, 
a very long time. And it's uh, almost 40 years or more. Yeah, yes, you are correct. <laughs> Okay, very good. As we know, peat moss is excavated only in certain regions of the world. Where exactly can we find the peat moss called sphagnum moss? In the Baltic states, we made the sphagnum moss. We know it in Estonia, in Latvia, Latvia, a little bit, mainly Lithuania. Some in Nordic, Nordic countries, it in Finland, but then very most of the Svagnupita in the southern part of the Canada, and in Russia too, maybe in the Siberia, a little bit like Estonia, as is Piti Posi, Svagnupit Posi, so is more gardening. And Mal, maybe you can tell us uh, why special Svagnupit moss is so useful for gardening. Because uh, Svagnupit has most benefits as growing media according to also choices as the best buffering ability gives moisture and nutrients and realizes them according to the plant need because it is very important because it is keep or fertilizes and keep all the water. And uh, I thought this very have to say before I said it is environmentally very useful, important that sparknum beat uh, is uh, beating with uh, precipitation and so uh, is clean because there uh, is clean because there uh, is not influence ground waters and ground waters maybe some trace elements that I have to mention I made such kind of art and to publish a book trace elements in, in Estonian beat and I have to say it is really so that all these peat layers, especially sphagnum moss, what is uh, used for uh, in uh, these uh, hot houses, and it is really clean. And then there is no uranium, and there is not uh, also that kind of trace elements. It is really clean. Yes, uh, we do agree. Uh, with yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also it is disease suppressive, it uh, due uh, uh, the uh, beneficial microorganisms which are found in peat, uh, such as uh, penicillium, trichoderma, uh, mucor, mortuarella, and uh, some of them uh, may have the ability to suppress uh, root rot pathogens and some works like antibiotics. And in addition to what uh, Mal said, uh, this uh, Svagnum peat moss is very much loved by the gardeners due to the ability uh, to help sandy soil loosen up, to give more air and drainage to, to the roots. And in case of, uh, uh, sorry, it was clay soil uh, to loosen up. And in case of sandy soil, it gives the body and it helps to retain uh, the moisture and nutrients. What I also concluded is that uh, the peat moss is the best growing media available and uh, also completely free of weeds and insects and diseases. So it's still the best <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the world. But let's go back to the sustainability. And I would like to ask, uh, what does sustainability in peat production mean in general? I know there are many, many uh, thoughts around it, but maybe you could uh, point out some of them. What I have to say, so some points. At first, of all, we collected as much peat as it is renewable in the whole area. But I have to say, because it is governmental, said how many tons we uh, pre producers may be collected on here. Uh, but I have to say that it is in this is very correct. Peat producers don't produce more that is by permit. And second, we choose peat moss material according to the growing purposes of use. Each peatland has own characteristics and it is very critical to send the right material to the right country. It means we can choose peat according to the composition level, absorption level, Dry substance matter, moisture, organic matter, and dust content. Uh, when I learning in sociological survey, technical university, 
sen ai ti töm ool siis saarias litel and maybe large vaiis ool piitaraktaristik juusvol vos kaateding and vos svaatlum substraat and sen it may be it may be mentioned on some maps and when I learning all these resources, I specially calculated all resources for the Svagnum Beat Moss. It is very important to know, as I said before, that it is the Beat database, digital database, that all this determination as content, botanical content, and then I specially calculated this uh, how many tons and how many can be used in this. It is very important. And uh, now I have to say to Pitmos, why I made in field talk in our experience on also was very long term field talk. And in field talk, uh, I always determined all these how many are these slight humified. To 20% slightly humified peat, it is useful for this peat moss and for gardening, for growing media. And I specially used geologists for investigation with good experience because I don't know nowadays, uh, I have to say nowadays I learning students in our university, technical university, because if I so so large database, I think that uh, young people must learn it. It is very interesting. Uh, my opinion was a future uh, some student learn because uh, University and Geological Survey Estonia, we did term the botanical content uh, or start to university botanist put it to all species, how is uh, peat moss, how it content rubellum, angustivolium, magellanicum. It is my opinion uh, because every plant has different uh, conditions to keep the water. Maybe it is very interesting future that we, when one we compile the peat database, and I have a very good assistant to help because for every plant has a special place and at our database helped us, I explained, because if I am interested, I interested maybe it is name, Rumpusi, maybe Lannu, maybe also Peter and is of Estonia, in which step and the interesting uh, Svagnum rubellum moss peat. And in the depth of the 20 meters, a degree of efficacy is 15, maybe 10%. And I asked for this database, and it gives answer. Okay. And I have to use the suggest all to use all this because so very in depth data very in, in the depth all uh, because the program is set up that uh, that it all be fine. So okay. basically, the peat database is also helping us uh, improving yeah. the sustainability in peat production very widely. And uh, that's the key message, I think. Uh, oh, I know you have a good question. What are the special directions that the Estonian peat producers need to follow quite strictly before they can uh, start producing peat? Yeah, it, it is very strong, Estonia. It, it is very strong all these peat producers. There are quite a lot of acti activities to apply. There are first geological research. Uh, Environment impact assessment. Environment impact assessment nowadays it is very important because I have two good experience I made. Uh, I have lots of that made this uh, impact, as, uh, impact assessment environment. And then government permission for extracting in certain area and resources conferred by government. Then because uh, all these mineral resources commission confirmed 
and then if the resources are very well learned by laws, and then if the uh, report is confirmed, then breed producer want to give the permission. And the governmental giving is permission for 25 years. And uh, as Mal said, that the uh, permissions are uh, given for 25 years. So it means that when we can start harvesting in uh, one pit area, it means that we open one pit field. And when it is uh, used uh, for 25 years, uh, we have to take care of it. We have to close the ditches uh, so that the water level uh, could uh, uh, rise again and uh, that the uh, whole area would be again a habitat uh, of uh, sphagnum peat moss. So uh, it is, uh, the used area is not uh, left abandoned. We strictly are regulated how to take care of it and uh, how we uh, make the steps for the natural uh, nature to come back. And, um, but uh, I would like to ask maybe even uh, directly from you, Ave, I know that you know uh, this question well, how many years are we able to produce peat sustainably? In, uh, I mean, generally in mixed car. Uh, it's quite easy to answer to this question, luckily, because uh, as we know, the permissions are given for 25 years. And uh, it means that as we have uh, quite lots of uh, different peat bogs in uh, various positions in Estonia, uh, and uh, they have been opened in uh, different years, it means that uh, the last uh, permission will expire in year 2049. So, and when this uh, permission expires, it doesn't mean that we have to close up, we have to go home and produce no peat, but it means that uh, then again, we uh, can uh, start opening new peat fields in case we uh, follow strictly the guideline. Yeah, so basically, but it's the, like a process all the time. Uh, one is closed, another is opening and uh, applying new permissions. Uh, can we say that peat is renewable resource? Maybe, uh, Mal, you could a uh, little bit explain it. Uh. Yes, I have to say that peat moss is renewable resource because we already have seen old quarries which have been restored. And I see it is really nobody knows that they are coming today. But they <laughs> do not realize that, that really uh, it is really because it is close by the Swagno Beat Moss. Maybe it is not so old quarry, it is maybe 40 or 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. Because I, in this uh, bit deposit, I made. Uh, this geological investigation was a peat company at this really my photograph. Okay. <laughs> I confirmed that this is really like snow in the nature too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and after that, will by peat. See, we save, and then I, we save prevent already that it is really so. No, I, my long term experience said that different. Uh, peatlands behave different too. Maybe some quarry will with peat and restore quickly. Maybe it also is uh, no so quickly. I said that in the north of Estonia, near Lahema, nobody believes that this uh, one Hara peatland uh, restored so, so quickly. And so, like, Swagnum peat begin to grow. And maybe in Lahema, so as Virurapa, it is not so quickly because uh, we have to say that it is different, that is thought. And it is, uh, it is really very interesting question because it is my personal 
Opinions at uh, if restored Estonian peatlands are said what is made in Finland or made in south of Canada, but I have said and I have thinking that every country and every has climate condition. Okay, now and uh, man, let's uh, pretend that uh, we do not uh, mine peat at all in Estonia. And uh, the peatlands would be in uh, their natural state. Uh, what do you think? Uh, how would it uh, affect uh, us? And uh, what would be different here in Estonia? Yeah, I, I think so. That in nature and in uh, economy, maybe balance. And uh, I, we wouldn't have a category of science in the field as we have today, that it is really science and the technical coming to for that. The production is so way has helped also scientific researches. Moreover, due to beat post production, we have very strong economical sector, major production, and to sustainable base of any innovation. It, it is not so that we have to lay baby pallets protection and, and the economic So they have to uh, work hand in hand. Yeah, that was a very good insight uh, that actually also to work uh, closely with uh, producers and also with universities, we can create new innovation and also to uh, apply it to uh, the students and they already uh, start to discover and also invent new uh, uh, maybe even ideas for production, how to do it more sustainable. So I think it's a very good uh, insight. Thank you for that. Now, I would like to uh, ask actually, or to open discussion among our team as well. Uh, and, but first I ask uh, from you, Mal and Ave, uh, how we can protect our nature and beat box uh, generally. I know it's a very wide question, but uh, it's a quite emotional question always. Uh, but uh, but maybe you have some um, ideas about it. I think so that we can educate our students in early age, especially in the universities. And nowadays we see uh, other companies that with Mixcar have uh, these learning works beginning of high school and students or the production. And what I have to say, my long time experience in uh, in, work in the logical survey, so we are biologists and geologists uh, and geographers. And it is uh, big scientist is very universal and all of this. Uh, and, uh, and then we can promote circular economy in our production and partners and community. Nowadays, it is very important in uh, technical university or these other mineral resources. Promote circular economy is uh, very important too. And that is uh, with the European Union made project set up and they are working. The more example I have to say that the left of the growing media made of peat can be reused as compost in gardening very successfully. And very important is to restore used peatlands in a way that Svagrum peat moss can start to grow again. And nowadays it is made in Estonia by this helped European Union, and it is close teaches, and uh, the water level will, will be higher. State forest management center to Kesa with the European Union already investing in to recover nature at peat box. So we do many activities already years and years and it is looking for the future. So, but uh, basically Estonian government together with the uh, uh, European Union, we already done so many different activities uh, before and it's continuing. 
So uh, we never had the situation that we didn't think about it. It's just uh, the topic came up uh, maybe recently more. Who would like to maybe comment this uh, topic? I know it's a, a very wide uh, category and uh, there are different thoughts around it. Um, I agree with uh, Mrs. Orro that uh, we have to find balance between conservationist view of life and an entrepreneurial view of life. And I am strongly of the opinion that the state measures taken to preserve beachlands and uh, organize sustainable production are sufficient and successful. And um, I believe that the time limits of the permits and also the yearly quantity limits for excavation are efficient. And uh, this way we can continue sustainable peat production in Estonia. So that uh, even though the permits are valid for 25 years, they, they can also be renewed for the same peat fields uh, if there is uh, peat allowed to be excavated from that field. And um, <clears throat> I believe we should continue peat substrate production because so far no other growing medium has been found that would have equivalent positive effect on plant growth. And uh, actually I'm very glad that we can help the greenhouse growers all over the world uh, with this uh, vital incentive to growing vegetables and flowers for their people. Thank you, Crystal. It's uh, very important. Uh, you mentioned uh, also vegetables because we have a huge trend right now in globally that people are eating more vegetables. So uh, it's even uh, said that uh, eating uh, meat is uh, more bad for the environment than eating vegetables, but at the same time, vegetables need a good uh, growing media. So it's, uh, I would say that it's, it's not just one sector to dig in, but it's a whole uh, picture to look at. And uh, I think it is really good insight uh, what you just uh, gave for us. How has been uh, the feedback from the different countries among our salespeople? Yeah, they. Uh, I have heard that they are. Some of them are quite nervous uh, because they have heard of uh, uh, the uh, limited uh, use of uh, beet moss, or that uh, beet moss is not uh, allowed to use for gardening, or whether uh, beet moss could be excavated at all. So, in terms of uh, mixed gar. Uh, we can confirm that uh, so far there are no such restrictions uh, to us and uh, we can very well uh, supply our customers with the uh, quantities they, they need. Uh, thank you very much from my side as well. I, I must say that it was a very useful interview because me personally, despite I have worked so long in this field, I got the really good ideas, what I haven't heard before. And I really got convinced that uh, the thing we are doing is, uh, is not having environmental impact. These, uh, these slides about the, the peatland, which is restored and how quickly it is restoring after we, we finish it, it is really, really amazing surprise to me. I was personally thinking that it, it lasts longer. So basically, we, me, myself, I got more convinced that uh, that the uh, peat excavation in Estonia is sustainable, despite there are countries that maybe they have exhausted their resources. And in this meaning, I, I'm really happy in front of all our customers because peat is very good material to use for growing. And so knowing that in Estonia, we are doing it a respectful way for the environment, it is really good to know. And really, we are very happy to work together with scientists like, like Mrs. Malloru. Uh, she had given uh, really good advices during the years to us. Also, she has found uh, students who work with and, and doing uh, research works, different uh, levels. So together with, with students and scientists, we, we really got to get uh, more information about the peat and, and its characteristics, microbiology and different aspects. So it's, it's really interesting to work together with scientists. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mara, uh, for this insight. I also got more information from your, <laughs> your uh, comment right now. Thank you, Mal. We are very much appreciating your time and efforts because we know that you're really busy uh, in university uh, and you still are very, you're very active in this field. Uh, so uh, our appreciation is going to you and uh, we couldn't uh, do this uh, do this uh, interview without you uh, and consulting with you how to uh, and what we should even uh, mm, uh, bring out. So thank you so much from uh, our, uh, our team. And I hope we can uh, cooperate in the future more, more and more. Thank you very much. I have to say I appreciate you too, because we producers and us uh, beat production people. <laughs> we can do scientific too, because it was working many, many years together. And uh, I think that to work together with young people was in the future. Thank you very much. Sustainability and science uh, and also production, uh, we move forward hand by hand and we uh, always discuss with uh, also top scientists, uh, including Mal, uh, who has the best experience with uh, over 40, diff 40 years in this industry. So uh, we really trust scientists. Uh, we look at the numbers. We are really grateful for the PEAT uh, database, what uh, she's been uh, leading to uh, make it uh, digitally uh, available for every one of you. And uh, I think um, most important is to have an open discussion, of course, and uh, also to, uh, to see more wider picture. If we can uh, reuse things at home, it starts from us. <laughs> already as an individual person. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, this topic is uh, important to discuss. And uh, I hope that uh, you got uh, some good uh, ideas and also confirmation uh, about sustainability from here.